light of God, light of love, light of all creation. Allow yourself in this moment to accept that there is nothing to focus on except the truth that all is light. All thoughts that come into awareness that are about proving something else. Turn away from these thoughts and turn toward the light of truth. In this moment, finding the willingness of the heart to surrender all beliefs of any distractions, all distractions of form, the body that want your attention, focus on the heart, focus on the truth, focus on the light, affirming again and again that you want to remember and that every intention in every moment is that dedication to remember the truth that all is love and that all beliefs of pain and suffering of any kind discomforts upsets are all merely the distractions Let's say I choose limitation rather than wholeness. Light of God. Light of creation to accept that you are the light is to accept the truth of all life itself. That you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve the thoughts of the ego, the attention to the form, the constant focus on littleness, the constant focus on I like this, I don't like this, letting it all go resting in this moment without focus on anything else. Where is, where is the focus now? On the likes and dislikes? Or on the heart? The light? Opening the heart in this moment to the yes of all creation being completely equal and in union and beyond union. The willingness to accept ease and peace and harmony as the truth of being. Surrendering in this moment with willingness all perceived attachments that say, I need to pay attention to this, I need to pay attention to that. This is important. And listening, surrendering all those thoughts and focusing on, I will be still and listen to the voice of love. Tell me, show me, lead me into love itself. And the willingness in this moment to surrender. To surrender all the beliefs of separation that say humanity is separate. 
that there are differences that prove good and bad, right and wrong, more and less. Surrendering it all into love for all of humanity. The willingness to set, set the beloved free. Focusing on the heart. And letting go of all perceptions of limitation separation and affirming that your prayer the prayer of the heart to want to remember and to focus on love invites the divine alchemy of love's healing surrendering allowing inviting And in this moment, the willingness to breathe. Breathing deeply and fully. Willing to surrender everything that has been held as a separate body into the hands of God. Surrendering all seeming complications, all seeming difficulties into the hands of God the willingness to be free, free of all perceptions of limitation, and the willingness to surrender as you breathe every element of a separate identification, surrendering the body, all the energy bodies, and all thoughts into the hands of God. Finding and recognizing where is my attention. In the heart, I say yes, and I will breathe. Breathe deeply and fully into every cell. willing to breathe the sacred breath with all of creation. Breathing. Not wanting to hold anything back. Breathing. Breathing into life. As you breathe, Inviting the throat to open, the neck to let go into the hands of God. Surrendering all that you know about the throat and the neck into the hands of God. Surrendering the shoulders, arms and hands and everything that you thought you knew about the arms and hands and shoulders into the hands of God. And breathing breathing into the spine, surrendering everything that you thought you knew about the spine into the hands of God. Everything that you thought you knew about the back into the hands of God. Allow this to be the instrument of love. No longer identified as you. Breathing, breathing, and inviting the divine alchemy of love's healing into every cell. Inviting the divine physician into every cell. And breathing, breathing into the heart. Inviting the heart to come forward, open and available, focused on the heart no longer focused on 
the likes and dislikes of anything else. Inviting the heart to come forward undefended, open, available. Affirming that there is nothing to defend, nothing to protect. Trusting, trusting in the divine truth of love. Breathing into the belly, surrendering all the organs into the hands of God. Surrendering all the muscles, all the tendons, all the ligaments, every cell, all the blood vessels into the hands of God. Take this, take this body and use it for love. Breathing, breathing into the hips and thighs, knees, calves, ankles and feet, all surrendered to love. And surrendering the emotional body into the hands of God the willingness to surrender the mind and all of its intention to run the emotional body through fear no longer willing now to accept anything but joy and peace and harmony and ease compassion light itself and affirming as the body is surrendered I am light I am the Spirit of God I am eternal I am Continuing to breathe, breathing into the yes, that here in this infinite circle of love we are one, holy union, holy light, holy love. This sanctuary is filled with love, this universe is all of love, nothing else exists. Affirming. There is only one presence here. It is the life force of God. Within this life force we live and move and breathe as one. Let every breath, let every movement be the totality of the life force of God. the instrument of love, the yes to love, the yes to truth, light and love. Allow this hymn to be your prayer, to recognize the Divine Mother, the Divine Feminine, in divine union with the Divine Masculine, the call on the truth of love for all healing, recognizing that it is through the healing of love that all is remembered and returned to the truth of light. Wanting only to remember. Mm. 
When I feel this pain inside and I find nowhere to hide, Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. This sorrow now imprisons me. Somehow I need to be set free. Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. Heal me of my hurt and fear. Reveal the face of God so near. Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. Safety of a mother's care, for Jesus it was always there. Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. As I move toward the light, defend me from the dark of night. Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. Mother, rain your love on me. Thank you for the love you give in compassion for your son I live. Mother, rain your love on me. 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 This invitation comes from the heart. The heart of recognition that there is another life, that there is another way of living, that there is another reality, the one reality that goes beyond all knowing. And when you invite the divine alchemy of love, then you rest in the assuredness that love's healing is here. And you're willing to accept it. And that the healing is only the letting go of a made-up identity of limitation. Mother, rain your love on me so that I can recognize the love that is within and meet that love instead of the identity of separation. The yes to love. <clears throat> we ask for healing. We ask for the charity of healing. We ask for divine grace to open the eyes and the heart, to remember the truth of oneness, to let go of all beliefs of pain and suffering. We ask for this charity. We ask for this from our Divine Mother. We say yes to the light. We ask to remember love. We say yes to the divine transformation. Heal what is most helpful right here in this moment within this session of love. Heal what is necessary to remember the truth of all love. Heal every belief of separation and limitation that is offered. The yes to healing, the yes to light, the yes to reality. Apenas por vosso amor, apenas por caridade, a vós te damos louvor, ó oh, Virgem de Castidade, 
a penus por vos amor, atendo no su chamado, ajuda no so a curar a necessitados. Apenas por vos, o amor, apenas por caridade, a vós te damos louvor, ó oh, Virgem da castidade. Apenas por vos, o amor, atendo no seu chamado, ajuda no seu cessão. A curar a necessidade. Heal what is necessary. Heal what is necessary. This is the calling and the letting go of any knowing, but just take this life and heal what is in the way of remembering the truth of oneness. Heal it all. Take it all. Transform it all. I give it all. Everything, everything that I have believed in, every belief that's ever been attached in any way, surrender it all. Can you take that leap of faith and surrender it all? Faith that the divine truth of love will remove all false beliefs, all beliefs that have caused all pain and suffering, all attachments that have said, I am separate, the willingness to melt into love, the yes to love. Beloved Hafiz again, hears the cry for love and answers the cry. Mastery in servitude. There is really no place for I can't in love. A thought like that goes against the grain of light's astounding ability. I saw caring's beauty in action. There was a splendor there I needed to imbibe. The beauty of caring in action I needed to imbibe. But such a force, mastery and service, it tears you from your moorings. It tears you away from your comfort zones and allows the divine to be realized. It will bring you into an arena where a gladiator you will need to become, but one that may never get cheered. Some heroic deed you will do in silence, for that is greatness's preference, no fame. If the world comes to know you, be a good host to the attention that you get. Use all as a tool, dear, to build a shelter for your mind and others in need. Mastery in servitude. Mastery in servitude, it tears you from your mooring. This beauty this beauty of love why is there such a great gift in servitude service itself offering love without recognition quietly silently serving humanity in whatever way is most helpful in the moment 
absolutely demolishes the ego identity that screams constantly, what about me? I need, I want, I need to get. In the divine power of service, it tears you from your moorings. It tears you from the self-identity of safety of your own little harbor where you believe that the central purpose of life is to satisfy the me. The beauty of service without recognition is that in, in the loving offering of service, you begin to see the truth of love in everyone. You begin to see beyond a self-identity. And you begin to see that you are serving your divine self as you serve everyone. You begin to lose the edges of the moorings. You begin to lose the edges of the harbor that you build. And you begin to see every beloved, every offering to every beloved, as an offering to yourself. Because every offering is that self. There is a purpose why so many spiritual paths focus so much attention on service. Because it shakes out the ego identity that says, I have to take care of, protect, and defend me. And it goes against everything that the ego wants, which is recognition. The belief that recognition will bring you into love when there is no recognition to get. How can the divine that you truly are, the beauty, the perfection, the magnificence that you truly are, settle for a little recognition from the world of separation and pain? This is the great addiction. The addiction to proving worth that somehow, if you just have enough proof of your worth, you will finally come to a place of peace. Mm -hmm. And yet, no matter what, you cannot prove your worth. That would be the same as saying to God, prove your worth. Mm -hmm. To every divine being, prove your worth. And all of heaven would be laughing. Only in the belief of separation is there a belief of proving worth. If you are the creation of God, if you are love itself, if you are the divine truth of oneness, that cannot leave its source, what could you possibly have to prove? To accept that there is nothing to prove eliminates all addictions, all needing to get something, believing that it is not already within you. You are the divine reflection. You are the light of God. You are the wholeness of all creation. You are every flower. You are every raindrop. You are the sun itself. You are the moon. You are every star. You are the wind. You are the sea. You are every exquisite 
tree. You are everything of love. What could you possibly have to prove? Would you ask the sun to prove itself? Hmm. Would you ask the moon to prove itself? Would you ask the stars to prove something? Or do you just accept them as the divine? And to have that same affirming truth held in your heart. I have nothing to prove. Let me serve love in every way possible. Let me step outside the identity of separation and serve humanity in every way without the need for recognition. Mm -hmm. So when Hafiz says, some heroic deed you will do in silence, for that is greatness's preference, no fame, no fame. What could possibly need fame? Imagine the Buddha saying, wait, mm -hmm. I haven't gotten enough fame. Mm -hmm. That's what I was here for, fame. Or Jesus, walking on the earth saying, I'm here for everybody to recognize how great I am. Every word, every radiance that came from that beloved being was, let me reflect to you your greatness, your beauty, your perfection. Take this bread and eat of it. Take this drink and nourish yourself with the truth. How can perfection be improved? To accept perfection, not with arrogance that says, I'm the one, but in the divine equality of love, where everything is in perfect harmony and union together as one, melted into the light the acceptance of the beauty and perfection of all that is. This, is. this is the walk in the world. This is the seeming journey that everyone is in. And one of the greatest leaps into recognition of that truth is the divine service, the mastery in servitude to offer without the need for recognition. Well, everyone would say, well, that's easy. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Feel the urge when you offer service to someone and feel the urge of the ego that wants to be recognized for that service down to just little tiny, tiny elements of just, just somebody recognize that I am doing something for somebody else. And in that, the hook, the hook that says I'm doing this for me because I believe that I am without. I believe that I am not whole and complete. So I need, I need to be recognized because I have believed the world's agreements that outside recognition will satisfy and soothe this emptiness within. But the belief of an emptiness within is only healed through the recognition that there never was an emptiness within. 
that you are whole and complete and the welcoming of that truth. The yes, I am whole and complete. Yes, beyond the eye. And yet, offering, constantly offering. Mastery and servitude also offers to step out of the identity of the body. There is really no place for I can't in love. How can that be possible? I can't. There is no place for I can't. That doesn't mean that you aren't guided into what is most helpful. But the I can't says, I'm in charge and I've decided. In the guidance of love, show me the way. Everything becomes neutral. Everything becomes the opportunity to love. The opportunity to offer love. And nothing else has any value anymore. There is really no place for I can't in love. Because when you are trusting that there is an abundance of love, when you are trusting that, the, that everything is in abundance, and that there is no scarcity, then there is no purpose for I can't because there's nothing to hold back. It would be like saying, I can't share this meal because there isn't enough. I have to make sure I have enough. And yet everything of love is calling you to extend everything and to trust that there is enough that God will not leave you without and that there is no helpfulness in being the decider of the yes or the no if you are deciding on your own what you can and you can't do you're not open to the abundance of love's guidance that will lead you to remembering. Always asking for that divine guidance. Help me, please. I saw the beauty of caring in action. There was a splendor there I needed to imbibe. The ego's intention is constantly, first, what about me, before any sense of caring for the wholeness. And yet, love is calling you to wholeness, to compassion, to extending love, and stepping past the me, and recognizing that the extension of love is to you. Every beloved is you. When, you. when you hold a separation, when you say, no, I'm here and you're there, and I have to take care of here first, or here at all, the ego is saying, I believe completely in scarcity, and I believe completely in self-protection. And all of that belief is the cause of pain and suffering. It, it makes everybody scared. The fear of not having enough. The fear of not protecting. And the fear of not being able to evaluate constantly how to protect first, making sure that the identity as a body has enough. 
It is a leap of faith. Put everything into the hands of God and trust in the nourishment of love. The teaching that Jesus offered in the miracle of loaves and fishes was purposely exactly that, to go beyond the mind's limited identity of knowing and be blown out by how is this possible that there is enough bread and enough fish for every for the thousands that are here how is that possible that all, everything keeps appearing and keeps being replenished how is that possible the mind would say no way the mind would look under the table for the magician <laughs> instead of the faith that as I give, I receive. As I offer, I receive. Giving and receiving are one. It, uh, when you offer love without expectations of anything in return, that's the key. Without expectations of anything in return, to offer love without expectations of anything in return. Oh my gosh, what if somebody doesn't say thank you? Oh, how rude. I needed that. I needed that thank you. If I give, I have to be recognized. I have to have a thank you. The addiction needs it. Mm -hmm. The addiction needs the thank you. It needs the recognition. I did this. Who is the I that did this? If you are serving the master <clears throat> of the I, separate me, you can't serve wholeness. You can't serve two masters. You can't give to get and not become afraid. All fear comes from that, that relationship with giving. It all, it, it, it promotes fear. It promotes terror because it has to be reinforced that I don't have enough. I am not whole and complete. I'm separate. I'm without. And I'm looking to the world to give me what I believe is missing. And yet, God, love, every sacred teaching is promising you are the child of God. You are the magnificence of all love. You are whole and complete. You cannot serve that truth and want recognition and want to be thanked for what you are doing or what you believe you're offering. If you need a return, you do not believe in the flow of love. You do not trust that to give is to receive without recognition. Without, as soon as recognition is needed, it is the belief in separation. It is the belief that you are without. So here is Hafiz, But such a force, mastery and service, it tears you from your moorings. It tears you from your moorings because it goes against everything in the world's agreements. It tears you from the identity that's your mooring. Your mooring is your, is your harbor, your, your identity, your perception of yourself. 
and mastery and service tears you from that false identification and offers you a leap into wholeness to give, to offer love in whatever form that is called for to a beloved. But that offering is, you can't offer anything of love unless it is wrapped in love. It has to be wrapped in love, no matter what the form is. If you're giving bread, if you're giving a gift, if you're giving time, if you're giving service of any kind, it has to be wrapped in love, and it has to be complete in that love. It can't have little tails sticking out of expectations of a return, of, of an acknowledgement of giving. In the Jewish tradition, there is a purposeful, Practice where you give anonymously. And that anonymity drives the ego crazy because the ego wants recognition. Mm -hmm. The ego wants a thank you. Mm -hmm. Now maybe you think a thank you is polite because you believe in the rules of the world. And like, this is right. I need, a, I need a polite thank you. Come on. Who raised you, wolf? <laughs> but these are the laws of God. And in the laws of God, it's to open to the, the complete fullness, the unending movement of love's offering and giving and receiving all the same all the same, nothing missing. As soon as you interject, I'm looking for something, I want acknowledgement, I want a thank you, I want, boy, this is great. Okay, now I'm, now I'm satisfied. I got my, I got my reward for being good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is completely then in the hands of the ego and it affirms completely that you are separate and you are without and that there is scarcity. It doesn't show itself that way. It looks perfectly normal to expect reciprocation. And you may even think that reciprocation is part of the circle, but it isn't because there is an abundance of love that is, there is no limit to it. When you offer love, you offer love completely, without restrictions, not with, I have to hold back some because uh, I don't know if there's any more here. To love, offer love without conditions is to, Embrace and accept that there is enough and that love is ever flowing and that you will not be left without because you are love itself mm -hmm. and that nothing else is true. Mm -hmm. It's the leap of faith. But it's, it's consciously shifting out of an agreement that is insidious. We teach children to say thank you, to make it even. Mm -hmm. This is the polite thing to do. What do you say? And it's expected. And in that expectation, everything has to be paid for. Everything is expected to be paid for. There is no giving without getting. I want 
I want to be reimbursed. That's what reimbursement is, the thank you, the acknowledgement. It is not servitude. It is not divine service. Divine service gives without right, the need for recognition because it is wholeness. To give is to get. You have already received because you have given. Because when you give, you recognize that you are giving to yourself and that there is more than you recognized because as soon as you give love, you are filled with love. And when you give love, you recognize there's an abundance of love because it keeps being filled up. The more that you give, the more that you have. It's the, it's the well of love that is never, never drained. And how can you recognize the abundance of love unless you put it into practice and you offer it without conditions to everyone, in every form, how else can you recognize that love is, is so abundant? Unless you test it by giving it all away, because as you give it all, give all to have all, you begin to realize, oh my gosh, there's just an, it's never ending. There's just so much love. My heart is bursting. How can this heart get bigger? I can make it get bigger by giving more. Mm -hmm. And what is that more that you're giving? It's the recognition of the Christ in everyone. And that you want to serve that. That you want to give everything to that Christ. The holiness of everyone. This is not and has no relationship to the world's way of getting your needs met by being the giver. In the world, the relationship of I will give so I will get is predominant. It's what runs everything. It's the belief that I want to look like a giver. I want to look like I'm giving, but actually I'm giving to you so that you will like me. I'm giving to you so you will think that I'm wonderful. I'm giving to you so that you will accept me. I'm giving to you so that I won't feel alone. It, the, there is no love there. <clears throat> there is no, there is no to give all, you receive all. It is giving to get. And it runs just underneath the surface so that you can't really identify it very easily. So how do you bring that out into the light? That, that game, that agreement, by questioning. Questioning what is the purpose of your offering? What are you offering? Are you giving to get? Is there a, is there a program running behind the curtain of the unconscious that's saying, I want to be loved, I want to be liked, I want to be affirmed of my worth. I want to be recognized as good. That's a great one. I want to be good. Then in that wanting to be good, how many lifetimes have you spent wanting to be good? Mm -hmm wanting to be seen as good because you believe that you're bad and that giving equals I'm not as bad. I'm not as bad. 
as what? A made-up identity of badness? A made-up identity of damage? A made-up identity of wrongdoing? This is the breaking down, the, the, the unraveling of all of the strategies that are used in the world to promote separation. To go to bed at night and feel self-satisfaction with a little s will not keep you from waking up with nightmares. Because in the upside-downness, the erroneous identity of separation, when you've given to get all day in all the various ways, that sense, of that sense of satisfaction that you go to bed with is a false satisfaction because it's based on the belief that there isn't enough and that you are damaged and that you are mm -hmm. unworthy and that you are bad and you've just added some points somehow that you think God is now going to think that you're good by your giving to get. Why, why does every master call every beloved to the same truth? To bring a mastery to servitude. And why is it necessary in this mastery that you cannot be cheered for your offering. That you cannot do a heroic deed for fame. And the heroic deed is making someone a sandwich. The heroic deed can be letting someone cut in front of you but not having an expectation that you're adding up points of goodness but that you're offering love, that you have an intention of blessing and offering love without an expectation of return. <clears throat> because the return is you opened your heart and you recognized there was an abundance. Mm -hmm. Even if you just touched it just a tiny little bit, <clears throat> you're opening the door to the abundance that there is enough, that you are enough that you are everything of love, that you are the divine truth of God. But you have to step out of the agreement, the addiction to wanting to be recognized. How many fantasies have been built on wanting to be recognized? Oh my gosh. Millions of fantasies built on wanting to be recognized. When you find your mind wandering into the fantasy of recognition, the fantasy of being the hero, the fantasy of being given worth, that evokes a sense of loneliness. It actually evokes it because it, it isn't true. You're in a fantasy the fantasy that you're going to prove your worth through whatever, whatever. How many beloveds have in the spiritual ego identity taken a spiritual journey and used it to prove worth? Tons. An image of holiness, an image of purity, an image of goodness, an image of, of sacredness, rather than the acceptance of the heart's opening, of divine humility, of being everything and nothing. When Hafiz says, some heroic deed you will do in silence, for that is greatness's preference no fame, in silence, 
test yourself. Not testing yourself to see how bad or good you are, but bringing the addiction out of the shadows, out of from behind the curtain. Begin to have a practice of offering love <coughs> quietly, mm -hmm. without anyone knowing that you are offering love and offering service. And resting in that divine service without any expectations and just feel the pull of the ego that wants that recognition, that feels betrayed and and lost because it isn't getting the recognition, then you'll recognize it as addiction because that's how addiction feels. The need to get something from it. The need for the for the recognition. But all of that need for recognition keeps you from going deep within and meeting God within and coming wholly empty unto God. Not empty of your true self, but empty of your identity in this world that you've spent lifetimes trying to build in order to get away from an identity that says I'm bad, I'm wrong, I'm without. Mm -hmm. I have to build another one that is good and, and successful and with instead of without. But they're both false. I remember walking in the in the seeming journey, I had a beloved say to me that you needed to build a really good ego first before you could let it go. And that I didn't have a very good ego. So I needed to get a more esteemed filled ego. <laughs> And I, I asked, I asked my guides, I asked, yeah. I asked for help. And I said, how could this be? I have to spend, what, 30 years or another lifetime building a really good ego that's confident in the world and knows the rules and wins? Mm -hmm. And then I saw that the ego that I carried, the ego identity that I carried of worthlessness and lack was as strong an ego as any ego in the world. <laughs> it was very well identified. I was a mess. That was as good an ego as anybody's. It's all the same. You don't have to build a better ego. God will not leave you without. Let it be demolished. Let it be taken apart and unraveled, whatever the ego portrays itself to be. It doesn't matter. And one of the ways of this healing of that self-identity is, is to no longer try to give to get, because that's just trying to build a better ego out of the belief of unworthiness. Why not just cut your losses and start offering love without conditions? Trusting that there is enough. Trusting that you have been promised that there is enough love and that everything is already whole and complete and that that's where you're putting your faith and your trust that you don't have anything to prove. You can't prove anything. How can the truth of love, the exquisiteness of all creation, prove anything? Have anything to build or prove or to get or to accomplish when everything is already complete? The acceptance that I am very holy, 
I am whole and complete. I accept the truth that God promises. I accept it. I refuse anymore to accept a lesser agreement. I refuse. In this same teaching, in the belief of giving to get, there is also the seeming other side of the ego that would say to, to be aware of the temptation to see yourself unfairly treated. Unfairly treated. This is like the other side of the coin where I give, I give, I give, and nobody appreciates me and I'm unfairly treated. Or in any way that you are unfairly treated. That would really mean, if you were being unfairly treated, that there was something to get from out there. That someone's opinion, someone's treatment of you would actually change the truth of who you are. That if you're riding on the bus and someone does not offer you a seat, you're being unfairly treated because in your mind you've made it so. But in that belief that you're being unfairly treated, just in that, you have to believe in scarcity. You have to believe that there is not enough and that someone could take something from you. And you have to believe that you are a body. You have to believe that you are a body to be unfairly treated. If you are an accepting of the divine spirit that you are, that spirit cannot be changed. That divine being cannot be altered in any way. It can't be chipped away at. It can't be, it can't be ripped. It can't be shredded. It can't be, it can't be maligned. It can't have anything done to it. It is intact. So when the truth of love says, be aware of the temptation to, to recognize yourself or to see yourself as unfairly treated, that is the scout that goes out and checks out everything to make sure that everything is in according to what you believe it should look like and be like. But to accept that you cannot be unfairly treated <coughs> is freedom. It's, it's taking the chains off the ankles and throwing them away. You're no longer a slave. You're no longer perceiving yourself through the past and the past agreements of the world. Mm. But it's a big leap of faith to recognize that you cannot be unfairly treated. Mm. Not that somebody in, in their own ego doesn't have that intention to treat you unfairly. Every ego is filled with fear. And every ego is in the belief that they are without. So it keeps getting repeated over and over and over again. Everybody's being unfairly treated because it's all in the perception. But if you accept that the truth of who you truly are, your divine self, which is whole and complete in this <coughs> moment, cannot be changed or altered. No one can ever do anything to you again. And this is freedom. And it's not the same thing as saying, screw you and the horse you rode in on. Mm -hmm. I don't care when you actually do. Mm -hmm. It's not about building a defense, a better defense system that says, I don't want anybody to ever hurt me again, so I'm going to defend myself with a better defense system. But it's the opening of the heart. 
and the recognition that this heart cannot be damaged in any way. This spirit of love cannot be altered. And I accept this truth. I accept it. And I put my trust in this divine truth that's been offered. I cannot be hurt. Freedom. Freedom from the nightmare. Beloved said many years ago, when this path was just being burned open, this beloved said, well, you should be really careful. If you start traveling, there's lots of people who will want to just rip you to shreds. Mm. And all I could feel was, was laughter. Mm. The laughter at, at beloved wanting to shred love. And why would anybody be concerned about somebody else's ego? another lie. Why, why would there be concern of anybody's opinion? How many times have you been afraid and wanting to defend yourself against someone <coughs> else's opinion, a judgment, a conclusion that they have made in the world of separation? The only way that it hurts you is when you believe that it has validity. It only hurts because you believe it about yourself. If someone says to you, you're really ugly, mm -hmm. and that's your, that's your fear, <coughs> because when you look in the mirror you see ugly, and someone says to you, you're really ugly, that is going to be personal to you because you believe it. That's the only thing that it's hitting, is your own beliefs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hit anything else. If you are willing to recognize that you cannot be hurt by someone else because you are whole and complete and the truth of God and you just accept it, it doesn't mean that you're completely aware of it. It means that you are saying, yes, I am willing to accept this and live it as fully and as deeply as possible every day. I cannot be hurt. I can tell you that this, this divine truth, I cannot be hurt, I walked with. And I refused. Every time the mind started to go into concern about what others thought or what, what was going on, I would affirm again and again and again, I cannot be hurt. The truth of love is whole and complete. And that's all that's here. And I cannot be hurt. Hmm. The truth of love is all that there is. And little by little by little in that, yes, the identity of battle fell away. And love emerged from its hiding place. I cannot be hurt. I cannot be treated unfairly. The truth of God is whole and complete. How many times have you answered the phone and already been worried about who might be calling or what they might say or what you need to say to them or how you should say it? Or when you're walking in town, are you aware that the mind is thinking, what are those others thinking about me? 
and you're putting on a facade so that you're protected in some way instead of opening the heart and <clears throat> coming with your heart open first, exposed, undefended, nothing to protect, nothing to defend, available, without explanations, without defenses, without any kind of wanting to protect in some way. Every day offers you over and over and over again the opportunity to extend love mm -hmm. all day long. But you have to you have to want to walk with it. You have to want to live it. I cannot be hurt. And I can't hurt anyone. Because lo all I'm wanting is to offer love. If someone says to you, when you said that to me, that was very rude. It wasn't, it wasn't in any intention, but can you hear the cry for help or do you need to protect? Do you need to defend? Nuh-uh. I, I didn't say anything. Nuh-uh. <laughs> or can you hear the cry for help? How can I help this beloved? How can I serve love in this moment and serve the union of our one heart? Mm -hmm. By convincing someone that they're wrong? <clears throat> by defending, by protecting, by affirming, oh, that's right, I better defend myself because they're, they're mean, they're bad. Instead of, I am one with God. I walk with God in perfect holiness and I'm here to offer love. This is the mastery of servitude. I'm here to offer love. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how, but I'm saying yes to offering love. That's all I want is to offer love. And God will lead me. And God will show me the way. All beings of light will show me the way because I'm saying yes to being the servant of love, to serve love without expectations of return. Giving and receiving are one. That's all that there is. In this same teaching, it's the recognition that there is no strain in doing God's will as soon as you recognize it, that it's also your own. When you ask for help, thy will be done. You're stepping out of your little identity, your little mooring, your little, your little harbor, and you're saying, show me the way. I'm willing to serve love. Thy will be done. That your will is being surrendered into the will of love to serve love. That you don't want a separate will. Because the will of the ego is to promote pain and suffering and the belief of separation. And there's no, there's no truth there. There's no reality. Every single moment is the yes, I am willing to offer love in this moment. And I don't know what it needs to look like, and I don't know how it will unfold, but I'm saying yes to offering love, and I'm not looking for anything in return. I'm not looking to prove that I'm good at this or good at that. It has nothing to do with being good at anything. It's just offering love yeah. over and over and over again until it's seamless, a seamless offering of love. So 
in this moment if there is a question. So I call you to this practice to offer love without wanting recognition, to silently, quietly offer love, offer yourself, your divine self, to serve humanity, to serve in remembering the truth of every beloved quietly, gently, affirming love without an expectation mm -hmm. of recognition. And to bring this into your holy practice. when you begin to think and extend yourself into how can I serve in this moment? How can I offer love in this moment? Mm -hmm. Your heart begins to heal because the flow of love is flowing. And you begin to recognize more and more that there is enough that there is an abundance of love that is never stingy for anything, for anyone, or, and there is nothing to get from offering love except the circle of love. To give quietly, silently, no thank you needed, Just the breathing of love's fullness. So as we close, practice in this moment the offering of love without expectations. And just to be aware of what you might be looking for, whether it's someone's expression on their face to acknowledge that you've given them something, let it go. Let go of everything and just give, just offer love in the wholeness, in the light, in the truth of the abundance of love. The relinquishment of all ulterior motives. freedom of love's offering, the acceptance of the abundance of all creation of all love. 